that experience. But all I can tell you is, all when God is around you, like He is, when God is loving us like He is, you know, all we get is just, you know, I don't know how to explain this, but it is just so beautiful. That beauty, you know, that feeling, you know, that awesome, there's just that awesome feeling. You know, on my experience, my body is just started shaking. I don't know, it's just started shaking. Whether in my own house, whether driving, I'm just feeling this, the bubbling within my spirit. It's just a bubbling of souls. There's just a bubbling. And you know, I've just been training for the past three days my spirit also to pray. And I just found that I could just sit and then, you know, be praying, be praying, be praying, continue with God. Hallelujah. His love is so awesome, saints of God. He just needs us to open our hearts. Hallelujah. I'm so blessed. We are so blessed. You know, just, just walking in this building, you know, there's just so much peace. Surpassing understanding. Hallelujah. The love of God, the Bible says, ears has not heard. Eyes has not seen. That's the love of God for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How what you experience when you open your heart to God any moment? <laughs> Describe it in a when real way. <laughs> when you open your heart to God any moment. <laughs> 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 She's opening her heart right now. I've, I've trained this, I've done this in the last few days. <laughs> and she has learned to do that. Open her heart to the Lord. Oh. And she's experiencing the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you describe what you experience now? Oh my goodness. I'm excited. This is bubbling my spirit. I'm just experiencing so joy and peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want to encourage you all that God is very real and close to us. He wants to have that close relationship with us. That He's not just far away. Many people think of God being very far away. Actually, He is very, very close to us. And I encourage we all to have this close relationship and to enjoy, enjoy his, the relationship with God and enjoy life, enjoy whatever we are doing. That when we have God, it's, it's wonderful. I know, you know, now in Africa here is so hot. I mean, I know that you, uh, it, it's hard for you. Sometimes maybe you think of uh, the love of God sometimes when it's very hot. But we think of heaven, it's very cool. And in the presence of God, you can feel the coolness of God too. I have experience of people having fever. And I pray for them, they said, they feel the cool breeze coming into them. And the fever went away. And when you look around, you look at nature. I see some, those are goats or sheep. Goats, right? Goats out there. You know, those are creation, wonderful creation of God and the trees and all this. And I always see God, not only, of course I experience God every moment, just as Moncoy experience. Anytime I think of Jesus, His love will flow into me. His joy will flow into me. And you can have that relationship too. And this relationship will last forever. Till we go to heaven, it will last forever and ever and ever and never stop. Drinking water can be enjoying God. Ah, feels good. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's from God's creation. If water is not like this, if water is like oil, we still have to drink it. But I thank God, God, water is so clear and refreshing. And that is from the love of God. Everything we have, our eyes can see very clearly. That's from the love of God. Then we can feel warmth. 
Now hold the hand of your friend next to you right now. You can feel warmth. Squeeze the hand of the person next to you and say, Jesus loves you. Amen. His love is very real. And also when you have a close relationship with the Lord. Actually, yesterday, I was talking with this lady. Her name is translated the star. And she says she's a reserved person. And then suddenly, the Lord enlightened me. Because when I was leading her how to open her heart, I found that when I, you know, think of my spirit, go to God, ascend to God, and cry out. Now for me, I don't have to cry out. I just think Jesus' joy will come to me. But when I train people, it's hard for people to learn how to pray from the spirit. So I said, it's like your heart goes with your voice to God. And I found that when I cry out, ah, oh, hallelujah, to my last breath, and then suddenly joy will come. So I told her, try this. And now Star, I don't know, you know, she's a reserved person. Do you mind to come out and share what happened? Is it okay? Because she's very reserved, and yet she experienced the presence of God right instantly, and in front of the two pastors, they saw that right away. I mean, do you mind? It, it's, it's okay and, uh, for you to come and, and share and to encourage other people how real God is, how alive God is. Now, we have many people experience the powerful work of God, but I mean, we don't have time for everyone to share. But this is special because she's a reserved person. <laughs> Hallelujah. And actually, I'm going to start my testimony from when we left here on Friday night. Uh, we were standing here and we were holding hands and praying in a circle. And I remember when um, the pastor first started ministering to us, he said, you know, God saved his life was a twice, almost in a car accident where he didn't know God came from. No way, and it was almost. We left here, um, some of our sisters wanted to go to NIT for a conference. So we didn't take the route that we normally take when we go home. I avoid the Western Bypass that night all the time because of the accidents. But that day, we dropped them off by NIT, and there I was, approached one of our traffic lights. Nothing in mind that I'm joining the very road that I never go on. I went on it. As we were approaching the block line circle, I don't know where that car came from. I only heard it. You know cars of nowadays are so fast and so quiet. I only heard it when it was just near the car. And I think that car should have been going around 180 on the western bypass. And my instinct just told me to sway the car to the right. And my mother was sitting in the passenger seat on the left. You know, that moment, taught me something because the pastor used that very same example to say you never know and I think it was a wake-up call to say that God is with you all the time and I believe that if we had not been from here maybe it would have been a different story but God just wanted to give me a taste of what exactly he meant of staying in his presence and carrying him with you all the time Amen. But just to share on um, experiencing a connection with God, um, I went to see a pastor on Saturday morning, and like he said, I am a very reserved person. <laughs> and he kept looking at me and looking at me, and he said, do you like suppressing your feelings? And I said, no, it's just <laughs> the way that I am. And then he said, no, just, you know, just be free. You can even dance, you can even move, do whatever. And you know, in my heart, honestly, I want to be honest, I was thinking, oh no, when is this going to end? And he just said, no, you know, take your time, just keep going, keep going. And so finally, he kept leading me on how to do it and how to do it. And honestly speaking, as he said, when you do cry out to God, it's what is in your mind and in your heart at the time when you're reaching out to God that you will get to experience the joy of God. So keep doing it. And he kept saying to me, don't feel silly when you're doing it. Don't just, just close your eyes and, you know, get to experience the love of God. But I believe with more practice, 
I will be able to enjoy a deeper level of closer worship with God. Amen. At that time, I felt joy. Like he said, you know when he started it and then he would laugh at the end, I was thinking, oh. <laughs> and then when I did the very same thing, the same comfort and the same laughter would come. Amen. Amen. And at that time too, you were crying too. Can you describe what happened? Oh yes, and there was a moment when I just cried. And uh, honestly speaking, I, I still ask myself why I cried that day. But um, I think it's just the overwhelming love of God. Sometimes tears are a representation of the overwhelming emotions that you do feel when you feel close to the Holy Spirit. You know, I have so many stories, real stories of people experiencing the presence of God. When we are willing to open our heart, God is so real. He is so real. And it's promised in the Bible, in Mark chapter 16, it says that Jesus said to us, that go to all creation and preach the gospel. And then he who believes and is baptized will be saved. And then miracles will follow those who believe. In my name you'll cast out demons. And when you lay hand on the sick, they'll be healed. That I've seen so many miracles, I'm surprised. I would like to share the first time I experienced miracle. After I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998, when an evangelist laid hand on me. And I felt power like electricity answer me. And at the same time, I felt great love. Filled my heart so strong, I cried instantly. And I said, I didn't know that I can experience God like that. I didn't know I can experience the love of God just instantly rushing into me. And I cried for a long time. I felt relief of all burdens. I felt peace. I also smelled a sweet aroma. And I believe that is from heaven. That I felt like heaven. And I said I want to have this close relationship with God all the time. So I start to spend much more time praying to God. And then one day I cried to Jesus, Lord Jesus! Instantly, I felt power go through me. And later, I started to experience the joy of the Lord. And the day I experienced the joy of the Lord, I said, this is great. When I, before that, when I saw people experience the joy of the Lord, I was really impressed. I said, I want to have this joy too. So on the day when I experienced the joy of the Lord, I said, I want to keep it. And how did I keep it? On the way, in a meeting, all the time, I let the joy keep coming out. And then, in the public transportation, on the way home, I was doing this. <laughs> I kept praying, I kept praying from my heart, loving God from my heart, and I noticed that the joy of the kept flowing. And when I, when I went home, it was already very late, and I kept praying. And the next day, I kept praying, every day. Up to today, any time I think of Jesus, I can experience His joy and His love any time. And you too can have this relationship. And on earth will be like in heaven. Man. Do you enjoy working hard on earth? Do you enjoy the hard work, the frustration in life? But I tell you, if you have Jesus, you can enjoy work. You can enjoy life. You can enjoy eating. When you're eating, you say, this is the special creation of God. God created the food so wonderful. God put love into people that, you know, you know, you all can remember your mother, how she cared for you. That's from the love of God because God always cared about us. From everything we see, we can see the love of God. I hope you're convinced of the love of God. And let me share with you what happened one time. When I went to a church to preach, and I asked this pastor, I said I had this experience recently, that I experienced the Holy Spirit, and then I pray for people and then experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I pray for your members? And then he said, okay. But then you just ask who want to be prayed for, and then you go to another room. So we went to another room. There were about uh, less than 20 people in that room. And I laid hand on each one of them. And afterwards, I asked them, did you experience anything? And one woman jumped up. My back ache is healed. <laughs> and another woman jumped up. My shoulder ache is healed. And it was the first time that happened to me. And I said, the promise in the book of Mark and in the book of Acts, 
I'm coming true today. It's coming true. He is very real and He can bring miracles today. And I start to pray for people and all kinds of miracles happen. And I hope that it will waken your heart up. It will wake you up and say, the Lord is so close by. He is so real. He wants to bless you. He doesn't want you to live in pain or suffering or tension. One time, I went to a place and I, I went there and preached. And someone heard about me going there. And a woman with breast cancer came. She heard that I was going there. And the woman had breast cancer and she came. She said that she had pain on the breast for over a month. And the doctor diagnosed her and said that she had cancer. And she came to me and we prayed together. I said, I don't know what God will do, but I see that God comes to everyone who hunger for God. And I told her to be totally free, relax, to be free and trust in God. And then she kept praying with me. And she was very relaxed. And then afterwards, she shared this. During the prayer, she felt some force pushing on her breast. And she looked, and there was no one's hand on her breast. And then she felt a dark force leave her breast. And after that, she felt joy. And she was laughing and rejoicing. And then afterwards, she said that the pain went away. And she went back to the doctor and examined her and she said, the doctor said, the cancer was gone. Man. It's something that shocked me. It's something that shocked me. That I did not expect to, to happen. And let me tell you, I've experienced very healing. But every time when I see a new healing, it still shocked me. Man. It's still a surprise. Man. One time a woman brought uh, her daughter, 20 year old daughter, and she remembered this day. She told me that day was January 13, uh, 13 2014. She says she remembered this day like her anniversary day because this is a day that brought healing to her daughter. Her daughter had insomnia, she could not sleep for four years. Every night she just slept for a short time and then she woke up. And she was going to university, and she has to quit university. Can you imagine that? She has to quit university. And then she came. And then I prayed for her, and I don't know what would happen. But she said, starting that night, she started to sleep. More and more and more. And gradually she could sleep great, uh, normally, and then she can go back to university and finish her degree. And when I heard stories like this, and this woman said, you know, this transformed her life because before she has gone to see different kinds of doctors, but her daughter was still suffering. But now without medicine, with praying, God is so real. Do you believe God is real? God is real. God is real. God is alive. If we all have this living relationship with God, if we have this living relationship with God, you will experience the blessings of God just like me, 64 years old. And I play tennis. <laughs> and I surf. <laughs> with power. <laughs> when I go for trips, young people get tired sooner than I. <laughs> when I came back from a trip, they said, are you tired? I said, no, I can play some tennis now. <laughs> I thank God for that, that God blessed me in every single way. He gave me health because the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Now this is my wife's picture. It's hard for you to see, me and my wife. That we always have this intimate relationship. The Bible says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. But many husbands never obey them. They just demand a wife to take care of them, uh, do everything in the house, and 
when they find anything wrong with their life, anything they don't want, then they yell. And let me tell you, I never want to hurt my wife. I never want her to feel hurt or sad or unhappy because of me. I want her to remember me as someone who always loves her, always give her comfort and care. And she's like that too. Let me tell you, before I came, on the night before I came, she has to go to work the next day, very early. But she refused to close her eyes. <laughs> she kept looking at me on the bed. That's what happened many times. She just looked at me and just said, let me look at you longer. <laughs> let me tell you, if you want to follow God, you want to love God, you want God to be your king. Your kingdom come means that God is your king in your heart, in your family, in your marriage, in your church, in your workplace, in everywhere you go. You let God be the Lord of your life. And then your whole life will be blessed. God has blessed me with a wife that loves me so much. Let me tell you, I haven't seen another woman that loves me her husband's as much as my wife. I haven't seen, I haven't seen anyone yet with that close relationship with his wife. Let me tell you, when I eat, I eat single-handed. Where's the other hand? I'm holding her hand. We always do nice things to each other. When we go home, we always try to be the first one to get the slippers for the other person. It's a small gesture. I mean, getting the slippers is not anything special. But it's a gesture to show love. When we brush teeth, we always try to get the tooth, toothpaste for the other person. When I need water, she always wants to get the water for me. And I said, don't, don't, I'll get it myself. And then when I her that she needs something, immediately I will run to get for her. Because God wants us to live like that. When you live like that, when you let God be your Lord, your whole life will be blessed by God. You know, so many people, they said, I believe in Jesus, how come I have so much suffering? Let me tell you why. At home, they yell at each other. Isn't that, is that letting Jesus be the Lord when they yell at each other? That is not. But so many people are yelling at the husband or wife. They don't let God be the Lord. They said, He did not treat me right, so I, I'm not going to treat him right. I'm going to get angry with him. This is not Jesus' way. Jesus said what? Overcome wickedness with righteousness, with kindness, with goodness. That even when people are not nice to you, you love them. That is letting Jesus be the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. The kingdom of God means two things. The kingdom of grace. Where salvation comes. Salvation by grace comes. That's first. That you seek, you pray, that more people will come to Jesus and have salvation. So that's the first part. Your kingdom come. The second part is, let the Lord be your king in your hearts. You totally submit to God. Let me tell you, when you submit to God, it's better than doing any good things in the world. Because when you submit to God, He is good and gracious. He is a good and gracious God, and He will surely bless you. I'm blessed with health, blessed with joy, blessed with good teaching, good preaching, blessed with the presence of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and in every meeting I, I, I led, people experience the Holy Spirit and people experience transformation of life. In heaven, there will be a large crowd of people. God will say, this large crowd of people has been blessed by you. Do you want to live a life, life like that? Do you want to live a life like that? Or do you want to live like this? Oh, work is so hard. Oh, my husband yells at me. Oh, I'm not happy. Oh. Do you want to live like this? Or do you want to live a life of joy? The Lord is the source of joy and blessings. Many people think of following God is sitting in church. 
Many people think, when I sit in church, I'm obeying God. Let me tell you, that is only the first part. When you really let God be God in your life, let His kingdom come to your heart, to your family, to your church, to your workplace, to everywhere you go, that people see Jesus in you. Let me tell you, your life will be blessed. Your life will be blessed. So I hope that you will not have schizophrenia. faith. Have you heard of schizophrenia? Split personality. Many Christians have schizophrenia faith. Split faith. At the same time, we believe God is Almighty. At the same time, we believe in our own power, our own plan, our own ability. And we want to follow our life our own way. You know, this is folly. This is foolishness. When we just want Jesus to be give us salvation and then follow daily life with ourselves, with our daily life, you will suffer. One time a Christian came to me, I, actually I'm not very sure whether he's a real Christian, but he said to me, Pastor, you know in examinations there is a passing mark. In Hong Kong sometimes it's 60% that is the passing mark. You know, I want to go to the passing mark so that I can go to heaven, but I just want to go reach the passing, the passing mark. I just want to pass. Tell me what I need to do. And I just want to go to heaven. I don't want to do anything more. Have you heard people like that? They think they are smart. I can go to heaven, but I just want more of the world. And so I just want to obey God to the minimum degree. What is a smaller amount of work I put for the Lord and I just do that minimum? I, tell, I told him, when you have this heart, this is great rebellion against God. You're saying, Lord, I just want something from you, but I don't want to have a relationship with you. It's like if your children tell you, Mom, just give me food. No more. Just give me food. I am not going to help you. I'm not going to be nice to with you. Do you want a child like that? He just say, be nice to me, give me food, and nothing else. Many Christians are like that. Is that smart? That is not smart. It's schizophrenic faith. It's a term God gave me. Hallelujah. The Lord has taught me different things. And He told me, it's foolish. When you are like this, you suffer. Are you suffering right now? In your home? In your relationship? A lot of time because you are angry with people who are angry with you. That is why you are suffering. Do you want to continue to suffer for the rest of your life? Let me tell you, I enjoy my wife. My relationship with, with my wife is like heaven. I enjoy preaching. Hallelujah! <laughs> preaching is like in heaven. I enjoy praying for people. I enjoy. When I pray for people, first of all, I enjoy God. And when I pray for people, people experience the work of God and say, God is so wonderful. It's not my work. No. Because God, let me experience the Holy Spirit when I was weak, not when I was strong. And I said, Lord, I don't deserve that. It's a blessing of you. And God has taught me to be humble. Every work of God is His work, not my work. If I'm proud, it's like this. I'm building on the foundation of Jesus Christ, but I'm tearing down. Actually, every Sunday you come to church here, you're building on the foundation. But if you don't obey God, you don't follow God, you don't have a good relationship with Him, you are tearing down. All this effort is in vain. If you just come to church, and then you go home and yell. It's in vain. Do you want to put so much effort and be in vain? You can have this close relationship and everything will be like heaven. When I have contact with different people in different countries or even on the plane, in the tennis court or different places, I always care about people. I always listen to people, be nice to people. I have friends everywhere. And I put many videos online. You can go on YouTube and you can look for Pastor Yip. Spells Y-I-P. 
and you can see many of my videos. And also Facebook, you can look for Pastor Yip. Again, it's Y-I-P. And you can see my some of the important videos. There, you can see how people are blessed. And you too. And I, today, I want to encourage you to really follow God and do not live in a life of suffering and pain. And also the worst, the worst condition is eternal damnation. That is the worst. In John chapter 15, verses 5 to 6, here it talks about a real close relationship with the Lord. It's like a branch is in a tree. John chapter 15, verses 5 to 6. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. When they are thrown in the fire and burned, does it mean eternal life? Let me ask you, this verse says, And they gather the branches that are cast out and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Does that mean eternal life? No. It means eternal hell. Do you like hell? Nobody likes hell, right? Now what happens, what, you know, who are these people? These people who are not abiding in Jesus. Abiding in Jesus, have a close relationship with Him, a personal relationship with Him. I know many people like to go to church and the part they like most is what? Hallelujah, ooh, ooh, hallelujah, ooh, ooh, ooh. That part they like. But it comes to going home and really have that close relationship with the Lord, they say, it's too boring. To read the Bible is too boring. To pray is too boring. And also, when it comes to being angry, angry, when their family members are angry, then they cannot control it. They let, they follow their sinful nature. And the Bible says, he who sow to the sinful nature will reap destruction. So when people don't have this living relationship with God, they can have eternal damnation. And Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, that there are many people, one day, they'll be in hell. And these people know Jesus. In Matthew 20, uh, chapter 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Let me ask you, who will say, Lord, Lord? Who are these people? Are they the Gentiles outside, the, the heathen now, some who don't know Jesus? If they can say, Lord, Lord, that means these people have gone to church. They have heard about Jesus and they will pray, Lord, Lord. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now we are saved by grace through faith. We are saved by grace. It's a free gift. When you confess your sin and trust in Jesus as your Savior, you will be saved. It's and it, it's a free gift. Let me tell you, we are saved by grace is the truth in the Bible, but it's half of the truth. What's the other half? The other half is when we have faith, we will follow God, we have a close relationship with Him, and we obey Him. Faith without works is dead. This is the other truth. We are saying this to, together with me. We are saved by grace through faith. We are saved by God's faith. Say it again. We are saved by grace through faith. This is the truth. Say it together. This is the truth. This is the truth. But it's half of the truth. The other half is when we have faith, we will bear fruit. We'll have a close relationship with God. We'll obey God. Faith without works is dead. There are people who think, I pray to Jesus, please forgive me. 
and I'll be saved. That's true. But if this person continues sin without repentance, that means there is something wrong. Now, let me first go to uh, John 15 that I just talked about. He who abides in me. What does that mean? Abides in Jesus. That means we live in Jesus. We have a living relationship with Jesus. When you believe in Jesus, you notice something very special happen. You notice that in your heart, when you are angry, when you sin, you feel guilty. When you do something wrong, when you don't pray, when you don't go to church, you feel guilty. How many of you feel guilty when you do something wrong? Would you raise your hand? Now, if some of you don't feel that, you better come to God in repentance. If you have eternal life, if you are born again, you will have this experience. And God will speak to you. But many people will say, well, for instance, I use an illustration. Many Christian men see a beautiful woman with peak and say, well, nobody sees me. It's okay, every, every man look at women. But let me tell you, on the judgment day, the whole world will look at our life again and see how we look at women. Don't think that we can escape the eyes of God. Jesus said that. All that is hidden, all that is hidden will be exposed. Everything that is hidden will be exposed. So whatever I do, I know that. One day the same thing will happen again and the whole world will be watching me. So God convicts my heart, especially after I experience the Holy Spirit. I find that when I pray for people, so many people experience the healing, the transformation of God. I said, I don't want to waste my life because I saw that I could bring changes to so many people. I thank God for the gift and you too. And I don't want to waste my life. So whenever God speaks to me, I will respond to Him. That is living in Him. That you pray to Him. When you hear God's Word, you let the Word of God stay in you and you meditate on the Word of God. And then when God speaks to us, we will respond to the Word of God. But many people don't. Let me tell you what I do. If I see a woman that is sexy and attractive, when I look and I notice that I have lust, immediately I say, this is sin. You know, I notice what is inside me. I become aware of what is inside me. Immediately I say, this is sin. And I, I will be aware. Uh, two days ago, I talked about the five steps of victory. First, I'm aware. I'm aware I'm sinning. I'm aware a, a sinful thought came to my heart. And then second is, I know it is destructive. Say it together, aware. aware. Second, destructive. Third, apply biblical principles. Apply biblical principles. When we sow to the flesh, we will reap destruction. So the Bible tells us that when we sow to the flesh, we follow the flesh, we'll, we'll reap destruction. So I say, Lord, I don't want to have destruction. I don't want to build it on the foundation of God at the same time tearing it down. Let me ask you, have you torn down what you have built up in God? Have you, in many, in many cases, when you get angry, when you have lust, when you have greed, have you torn down what you're building? Have you? We all have. But when you have the voice of God inside you, I hope you respond to God. And don't take God's voice lightly. Don't think that this is nothing. Let me tell you, when we reject God's voice, it's very serious that when we disobey God, disobedience is like adultery, it's like idolatry. So what happens is immediately I will handle it in my heart and then I pray and then I will turn away. And I, so the moment any simple thought comes to my mind, I immediately take care of it so that I will not continue to live in the sin. And I will praise God, hallelujah, you give me the motivation to overcome sin. And then I rejoice in the Lord. Actually, for the whole day, I rejoice in the Lord. That way, I have strength. 
And the more I rejoice in the Lord, the less I have lust in me. It doesn't appear that much. But still, whenever it comes up, I will immediately take care of that. I don't know if you have seen a game like this. In some places you see a game that has many holes and there are animals' head coming up and you hold a hammer. When the head comes up, you hit it. Have you seen that game? It's like this when you take care of your sins. When it comes up, hit it. <laughs> when you have lust, hit it, stop it. And repent. Lord Jesus, help me. I don't want to stay in sin. Because sin has a consequence. And God knows your heart. God knows your heart. God knows my heart. If God knows that your heart is full of lust or anger, does He like that? He doesn't like that. Let me share with you something. Actually, I'm thankful to God for that. I'm not proud because of that, but I'm thankful. I'm humble because of that. Let me tell you, some people told me, God told them, they said, God said what? Learn from Pastor Yip, learn from his lifestyle. Watch his life, learn from his lifestyle. I thank God for that. Let me tell you, when God let me experience the Holy Spirit, I was weak in a number of ways. But after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I start to handle different problems in my life. I know that everything in my heart is exposed to God. So I take care of different kinds of problems. And I want to be pleasing to God. Any moment I have any negative thoughts, God will help me to take care of that. And then I respond to that. And I, I've, I'm very active to take care of my problems. And I actively stay in the presence of God. And I actively go to bless people. And God likes that heart. But let me tell you, I'm not proud because of that. I'm saying, this is God's grace. I was not like this. It's the free gift of God that changed me. It's the gift of God, the blessings of God that changed me. It's not me who changed myself like that. It's God who spoke to me. Let me ask you, this morning when you hear this, do you want to have this living relationship with God? To let God live in you, and when God speaks to you, take it as something very seriously. Let me tell you, in ancient China, when there is the order from the king, when it comes, immediately when people, when they say, okay, the, the order of the king arrives, and immediately people will kneel down. They will kneel down, and then when the king order is spoken, and then the people will say, the will of the king will be obeyed. Let me ask you, do you respect God's order like that? Do you respect God's word like that? Because one day, many people will stand in front of God. In Matthew chapter 7, that we look at before, that many will say, Lord, we have prophesied in your name. We have brought healing to people in your name. And we have performed miracles in your name. And Jesus said to them, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. You men of sinfulness, I do not know you. There will be many, because this Bible verse in chapter Matthew chapter 7, it says that, that many will say to me in that day, many will say to them, are you one of them? Are you one of them? You say, Lord, I have prayed to you. But Jesus said, you have not obeyed me. You have not had a close relationship with me. It's going to church is superficial. Some people, going to church is sleeping time. When it's sermon time, sleeping time, rest time. Or is it a time that you say, Lord, thank you for your word. I want to respond to you. Let me tell you, God spoke to me in many, many ways. I use some illustration to illustrate how God sp spoke to me and how I responded to God. One time in a pastor's meeting, different pastors came together. Some of these pastors were revived. Their sharing was exciting. They, what they share is inspiring. They share about the work of God in the church is wonderful. But then one person 
one pastor shared, and this pastor probably was not revived. What he shared was something very, you know, not very powerful. It's just a small change of the people. And then when I heard that, in my heart, a thought came to me. Well, what he shared is not so great. That thought came to me. What he shared was not so great. Immediately God spoke to me. Who are you to judge? This change was brought by me. Even though the change was not great, it was brought by me. Your change was brought by me too. Who are you to judge? Immediately I said, Lord, please forgive me. I don't want to judge. It's just from a small thought. God will speak to me continuously like this. Sometimes I pass by a church that is weak. Sometimes a thought came to me, well, that church is not doing much work for God. And then God spoke to me, who are you to judge? I am still saving people in that church. And you want to pray for that church so that all people will be saved. So I changed my attitude. From then on, when I see any church, I'll bless them. I'll pray for them, no matter how weak they are. Amen. This is how I responded to God. It's a daily relationship. When someone says something negative to me, you know, actually that happened in 1998 when I experienced the Holy Spirit. One time I called someone and shared about how I experienced the Holy Spirit. And that person was angry because she did not believe in the infilling of the Holy Spirit and she was angry. And after the phone call, I found that when I pray, I lost the joy of the Lord. And God spoke to me, you have to handle it. So I called her up and said, I'm sorry if I made you unhappy. And I said that to her. But she was still angry. And after the phone call, I prayed again. I was filled with joy again because I handled the problem, even though she did not change. But it's okay, I've done, I've done my part. And then I felt peace. And God said to me, from now on, you handle every problem that comes into your heart. Every single problem that appears in your heart. When you go home, are you willing to go to your husband or your wife? I use an illustration, this is your husband. Are you willing to go to him and smile? And massage his back? Give him some food? I bought, I bought you some food. I want you to be happy eating it. Are you willing to do something like this? This is submission to God. That way you glorify God. That way you let God shine in your life. Instead of being angry. Instead of being angry. Many Christians, when they go home, they are angry. When they go home, they're not happy anymore. In the church, they're very happy. Hallelujah. <laughs> But at home, not anymore. Is this submission to God? No. Submission to God is to be nice to people who are not nice to you. To love your enemies. Your husband is not your enemy. Satan is your enemy. That will love our spouse and be nice to them. Find different ways, whatever you can do to make them happy. Gradually, your family will change. Gradually your marriage will change. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? That is let God's kingdom come. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, let my heart be a place where you are the king. Let's say it together. Lord, let my heart be a place that you are the king. That you rule over my life. That you are the Lord of my life. That I glorify your, lo your love. You glorify your name. Hallelujah. Now this is a living relationship with God. To let God speak to us through the word and through the Holy Spirit. And we submit to God. And you notice that when you start to do that. Your family life begins to change. There is more joy. There is more love when you are nice to your, your spouse. It will start to change. Sometimes it changes slowly, but it still will change. When you start to change, there will be small changes coming, sometimes very slowly, but it doesn't matter. God will be pleased with you. That's most important. If you change, 
God is pleased with you. And he'll say, I like this child of mine. He obeys my voice. I like him. Are you willing to submit to the voice of God? And always love God. Let me tell you, my whole day is like this. When I'm brushing teeth, very often I'll be listening to the Bible, and then I'll be also loving God. Hallelujah! <laughs> In my heart, always loving God. Always enjoying God. And I found that God has blessed every area of my life. Do you want your life to be blessed by God? Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. How many of you, when you found that, when you obey God, you follow God, God brings blessing to you? How many of you have experienced that? Please raise your hand. Bye. You notice that? Please remember it. Please remember it. That you experience God is because of God's love. Every time when you praise God, how many of you experience, experience peace or joy when you praise God? Please raise your hand. That is God loving you. When God loves you, you say, God, I'm so thankful. When I experience joy, it means that you are loving me. Say it together. When I experience your joy, it means that you are loving me. When I experience your peace, that means you are loving me. It's so beautiful to have you in my life. So I hope that you will appreciate God for everything and have this living relationship with God and submit to Him. And then you're, you find that your life will be blessed more and more. Some of you came to me and told me how your life has changed after you experience the Holy Spirit. Start praying to Him. And you notice a big change come to you. And I hope that it come to all of you. The Holy Spirit is beautiful. In a short time, I'm going to pray for you to experience the Holy Spirit. But let me tell you, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. When we sin, we grieve the Holy Spirit. When we love God, when we obey God, it pleases the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is happy to dwell in your hearts. The Holy Spirit is happy to dwell in the heart of a person who loves God. When God knows your heart, He's happy to fill you with the Holy Spirit. He's happy to come to you and bless you. So when you come to the Holy Spirit, it's very important that you believe God is loving me. It's very important. Don't, don't pray like this. Oh, Holy Spirit, please fill me. Why are you so far away? Come quickly. You don't have to pray like this. You pray like this. Oh, Lord, I know that you are blessing me now. In Psalm 139, verse 5. Psalm 139, verse 5. You are in front of me and behind me. You are laying your hands upon me. That is how close God is. You are in front of me and behind me. And you are laying your hand upon me. He is with us all the time. If you open your heart to God, you can experience Him any time. He is very, very close to us. He is very intimate. And in verse I like very much. Romans 8, 38 to 39. Romans 8, 38 to 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depth, or, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing in this world, neither demons or any kind of power, can separate us from the love of God. It's like this. Please look at me. If this is you, God's love is holding on to you. Hugging you. It's very close to you. He's holding close to you. There is nothing that can separate you from His love. So when I pray, I pray like this. Lord, I know that your love is around me right now. Please help me to open my heart to a degree that there is nothing that separates me from me from you because our sin can separate us from the love of God. Our unbelief can separate us from the love of God. But His love is hugging us all the time. He wants the love to penetrate our heart. Some of you experience, how many of you experience the love of God this last few days? Please raise your hand. 
You see so many people experience the love of God. He is very real. So I hope that you say, can you say with me, God's love is right here. Love is right. Nothing can separate His love from me. He's loving me all the time. I don't want to let sin separate me from God. I don't want to let unbelief separate me from God. I hope you hunger for the love of God, for the work of God, for the Holy Spirit. And then when you pray more, spend time praying every day. At least half an hour or one hour. Spend time praying, concentrated prayer. And then all day long, whatever you're doing, you praise God and love God, you find that your life will change. You find that you experience the love of God, the peace of God, the power of God. And then, when you pray for people, people will experience the work of God, and they will turn to God. And this church will be revived. Amen. When you are willing to do that, in the next few days, I'm going to do more training. Yeah. Then you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, and also handle the problems in your life and learn how to listen to people, how to love people, how to respond to people, how to do teaching, how to do praise and worship that is more powerful. And then your life will be used by God greatly and your life can do great things in this world. Do you want change to come to Botswana? Do you want change to come to this city? Do you want people saved? Do you want to dedicate your church to Jesus Christ to serve God? How many want to? Really, now think before you raise your hand. Don't just raise your hand. Because I'm going to ask an uh, apostle to stand up and see who raised your hand. He is going to stand up. Who is willing to submit your life to God and say, I want to follow God's way. I want to have a close relationship with Him. I want to obey Him. And I want to bless this church. I want to serve God in this church to bring people to this church. Would you raise your hand? Now, think before. Pastor, please look around who they are. And then, follow on them. Help them. That they will really follow God. Are you willing to really follow God? Not just with the mouth, but with your heart and with action. Thank you. And God bless you. At this point, I would like to ask maybe two of you who haven't experienced the Holy Spirit to come forward and I will demonstrate praying for you whoever wants to to encourage you all to open your heart to the Holy Spirit in a moment whoever wants to whether you have experienced the Holy Spirit or not you come forward and you say I want to taste the goodness of God I want to taste the presence of God who likes to come forward? anyone? To demonstrate to you, He is very real. He can bless you where you are. To encourage all of you to come forward for prayer so that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you receive power to be my witness from Jerusalem to the end of the world. We need the power of the Holy Spirit for your life to be transformed by God for you to serve God with power. Anyone here? You know, you know the first step you can be used by God is courage. Amen. The courage to stop, come up here. Anyone? Amen. Do you have the courage? Come forward, come forward. Amen. Okay, we'll just stand here to the side, facing me. Please close your eyes and open your heart to God. With a... Don't cut you can stand behind them. Open your heart. Now we all think of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, my Lord, my God. Oh, Lord, Jesus, my Lord. Sing praise, 
God is good and He loves us very much. 